What's up, Bugs? I'm Dini in the garage. Today we are installing a vacuum gauge on the Daily Cherokee, and I'll tell you why. A vacuum gauge is essentially a gauge that will tell you uh, how good of uh, miles per gallon you're getting at any given moment, but more importantly, it tells you a lot about the health of your engine. So if you're driving, this thing's got 175,000 miles on it, an older vehicle, uh, it's good to have some sight into what's going on in the motor. All right, uh, so by installing this gauge, I'll have in real time uh, information about the engine. Hi, Jojo. How you doing? Go in the back, baby. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> I'll have real time information about the engine. Is there a vacuum leak? Is there a misfire? If you know how to read a vacuum gauge, you can gain a ton of information uh, about. Uh, an engine's operation. I'm gonna do another video after this probably about how to read a vacuum gauge and uh, what different readings mean. But for today, let's figure out how to get this thing installed in uh, my XJ here. All right, you can see I got the dash torn apart a little bit. My thought process is to try to get this little guy uh, down here. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the center stack there. But real quick, let me just show you. These things are super simple to set up, right? Right here is where a vacuum line's gonna go. I'm gonna run a line into the engine compartment. I'm gonna tap into one of the existing vacuum lines with a T connector, done. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, that could be it, but I want this gauge to be lit. Um, so, uh, lit up, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is attach, uh, I'm gonna run these wires, probably right here to the, uh, the what are those, to the winch, I think, winch controls. Uh, just gonna tap into those so that this thing will be lit up at night and I'll still be able to see it down here. Uh, it's just a positive and negative. Uh, I've gone over switched and non-switched circuits before. This is obviously gonna wanna be a switched circuit, which means uh, it's a circuit that goes off when the Jeep goes off. So when I turn the Jeep on, this light will come on, this gauge will come on, will be uh, operational, all right? So let me figure out how I'm gonna do this and then I'll bring y'all back in and let you see it. Alrighty, this is how I think I'm gonna do it. I drilled a hole in the center stack here. There's a hole in her now. And I'm gonna slip this right back in there. Now, it's gonna be a little bit hard to read there, all right? Uh, but I want it out of the way. I don't want it cluttering my stuff up here. Uh, I needed to clear the shifter, so that'll be all right. When I, you know, I'll glance down every once in a while, I'll be able to see it. It's nice tucked away. It's gonna look somewhat clean, and I'm gonna be able to mount it off of this center plate so that if I have to take this off to get to my winch controls, I don't have to remove the gauge. All right, let's figure out how we're gonna wire it up. All right, I decided to use the same method for this that I did for my uh, fog lights. I tapped into the outlet circuit. Uh, in a Jeep and in most vehicles, you get two outlets. One is switched, one is not switched. That means this one's only on when the vehicle's on. This one's on all the time. Since I want this on a switched circuit, I tapped into the Wires for this one, positive to positive, negative to negative. It's not rocket science. And now you can see when I turn the Jeep on, lights come on. Beautiful thing. Uh, so now I've got the hole cut out in my uh, stack. I've got this thing wired up. Next, we're gonna have to uh, run the vacuum line. Let's go to the engine bay. All right, I got the uh, vacuum line run. It's run obviously to the gauge up through the dash and everything, out into the engine bay. Via this port right here, that's where I run everything else, that's where everybody runs everything. It's uh, If you don't know, there's a port on pretty much every vehicle underneath the uh, driver's feet that allows you to run some wires or some hose in this case uh, from the engine compartment into the cab. So I've got my hose run here. Now we're gonna need to choose which vacuum line we wanna tap into. I've heard arguments. Um, for using a specific line. Generally when I do vacuum, I just pull whichever one is most convenient. Uh, vacuum is created uh, right under the throttle body. So anything under the throttle body uh, is good to go, which basically means you just, this is not really a vacuum line. Don't make that mistake. Um, I could, what you have to do is cut it in half, the line in question, and then install this T fitting here um, so that you can cut into it. This one is a hard line. I, I do believe this one would probably be the best but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use this one right here. This is nice, uh, maybe not. Here's the thing, right? There's going to be slight variations for each of these vacuum lines, but vacuum is fairly consistent. And the most important thing is once you get your gauge in, you figure out what baseline is for you. It should be around 18 uh, in a Jeep like this or, or most anything. Um, but I'll, I'll pick a line here, I'll install it, we'll get our baseline, and then going forward, I'll know what high or low uh, vacuum is based on you know what what I'm usually getting. All right, I chose to tee into uh, yeah, this one down here. Um, 
had some hose lying around that was the right size to uh, to break that in. You can see though, it's real simple. They give you the T connector with the kit. That's right in there. Let's see how she works. Everything's all hooked up now. There's a little more hose in here than I need. Maybe I'll trim that at some point. But uh, okay, come around in here. You pups ready? All right, let's do it. Okay, we got the gauge right down there. Let's see about turn this thing on. There you go see right there my vacuum's a little low I'm not gonna lie should be up around 18 that's something I'll have to look into but uh, now that I know the gauge works you can see all right under acceleration you're gonna have less vacuum because your butterfly valve is open under more uh, under uh, deceleration you're gonna have more vacuum uh, and you can see this gauge has actually got little indicators around it because they know full well that most people use a vacuum gauge as a miles per gallon gauge you see best economy or power right down there so when you're really going up a hill or you got your your foot you got the thing right into the ketchup that'll be down there deceleration will be pulling more vacuum all right let me get this thing mounted i don't think i'm going to screw it in i think i'm going to double-sided tape it in uh for a variety of reasons one i can't get behind it to drill the holes and two then i can remove it let me figure out that and i'll bring you all in and we'll wrap this thing up all right friends there it is so i'll install at some point i may try to Cut something to clean up the sides here, but uh, you can see hidden behind a the shifter there until we turn it on. And then when this is in drive, got a perfect little view right there of everything that's going on. Yeah, that vacuum's real low. I'm gonna have to look at that, but at least I got it now. All right, you can see. Ah, oh, does exactly what it's supposed to. It'll help me figure out. What's going on with the engine at any given moment, you know? Maybe try to get a little bit better mileage out of this old 4.0, uh, but certainly I'll be able to tell if something's wrong with the 4 liter like I can now. This That should be higher, so I'm gonna have to look into uh, what's going on. All right, guys, that's all it is. Uh, as always, I hope you found this video amusing, educational, maybe even a little entertaining. If you did, by all means, like the video, sub to the channel. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, if you got any suggestions where I should look, uh, for my uh, low vacuum issue on this four liter. I'm always uh, I'm always into suggestions. I do appreciate it as always. Thanks for watching. See you next time Say bye Jojo. There it is hmm. Interesting <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I guess there was a uh, mounting stud whoops There's a hole in her now